Hello, welcome back to the studio with us. We are looking at the subject of karma, destiny and choice. And today I'm going to be interviewing Sister Denise, our guest speaker, on the subject of the law of karma and specifically ego and settling the law of karma. Sister Denise, a very warm welcome back to the studio. Thank you. Um, you spoke in previous episodes about the understanding of karma, choice, destiny, etc. And um, when you explain it, it seems fairly simple to understand. But um, what came to mind is that as human beings, we have blockages in our understanding. And hence today's topic, ego and the law of karma. I'd like to know, how does ego play? or shall I say, do not play uh, into um, our understanding of the law of karma and our settling of it. There are many different interpretations of ego and I would need to clarify ego as um, a kind of arrogance uh, where you say, I am so and so and therefore I can do such and such, which may be contrary to the laws of karma. For example, mostly in the moral laws, there's different laws that apply to men and different laws that apply to women. And there is an expression, male ego, and in that a male may say, well, I'm a male and males are intrinsically more valuable and higher than females and therefore they know better and therefore they can dictate to females according to their whim and that's correct karma you know so it, it this ego will cause a person to make um, logical or mistakes in their logic because of this ego of such and such a thing like male ego. Sometimes a person will have intellectual ego and they will say, well, I'm very well educated and I know everything and therefore there's no new information that can come that I wouldn't know about. And so if some new information is proposed, you will dismiss it. And that new information is going to make a difference in the karma. So the person with intellectual ego will make decisions or perform moral reasoning in a certain way which goes against the laws of karma in a very important way. Someone may have ego of their beauty and they may say, you know, I'm, I'm beautiful, therefore I'm nice. I'm beautiful, therefore I'm in demand, I'm attractive. Being beautiful is the same as being good. Whatever I like must be good because I'm beautiful. So this because, you know, these logical mistakes that people make due to ego. And sometimes it gets very subtle and they will say, well, um, this is my dignity. I should say ego but they call it their dignity, their honor. It comes in certain societies, this expression, honor killing. Uh, you have to kill somebody because their behavior was not good for my honor. Actually, it didn't make any difference to their honor, but they take it that way because of ego, you see. Sometimes it's not just ego by itself, but it's combined with tradition, and that makes it more difficult to point the finger at one person because it's more like an institutionalized arrogance. In many of the cases, it will put a woman in an inferior position and a man in a superior position rather than in an equal position. And then the woman will be penalized or sometimes the victim is penalized in, in a situation. 
Another aspect of ego to bear in mind is that if you're a person with a lot of ego, you can't see it. Other people can see it. Ouch. <laughs> mm. If another person can handle your ego sufficiently to be able to reflect it back again, or is sharp enough when some circumstance comes along which really faces that person's ego and they say, is this my ego? And the person can say, well, yes, it is. <gasps> because ego, a person with ego has very strong reactions. And people do get controlled by the violence that goes together with the ego. And so they would be um, relatively unwilling to say, well, you know, you're operating out of ego. Ego in um, spiritual practice is classified as quite a negative attribute. And so it means that the law of karma will function to uh, somehow bring a person face to face with their ego problem. And that will uh, really upset them because a person who comes face to face with their ego is very painful. And then they have to come down from their ego with an act of contrition or an act of humiliation or loss of face, things like this. And that is actually a very good way to settle that karma, but it's a very painful way. Okay, so when it comes to the law of karma and um, ego, does your ego allow you to see that this is my karma? Or does your ego um, make your karmic account worse? I think your ego definitely makes your karmic account worse. Uh, I think there are also some situations where a circumstance will arise that will really um, cause a person to have their ego challenged and they will react strongly to this ego challenge and either they will do something really negative and hurt the person who is instrument for challenging their ego. They may not even be doing it on purpose, they're just there as a challenge. And then they will really compromise their karma because they do everything possible to damage the person who is simply reflecting back to them that they have an ego problem. So ego uh, will make a person perform negative karma. Another area where ego comes up is the person will say, well, I know what is right and wrong. And their criteria may not actually be the criteria. It suits them. They say, yeah, you have to be like this and like this and like this, and this activity is okay. If anyone challenges them, they won't like it. And so they will perform karma according to their own idea of what's right and wrong. But if it's wrong, then the law of karma is going to come back at them and they will have to pay. And they will also have to recognize that contrary to their idea, it's not right. Historically, it was thought that slavery is right. And then after a while, it was thought, no, it's not right. Piracy is a legitimate way of doing business. And then, no, it's not a legitimate way of business. You know, if you can get away with it, it becomes legitimate. But if it gets challenged, you know, again, with the ego of wanting to be unrestricted in how you make money at any cost to anyone, human trafficking, you know, what's wrong with human trafficking? These people don't matter anyway. You know, these attitudes are arrogant attitudes. And when you do something like human trafficking, drug trafficking, whatever, arms dealing and so on, you damage a lot of people. And when you damage a lot of people very severely, ruin their lives, you mount up very big debt and it's going to come back and hit you in the face one fine day. There's no escape. 
you can get away with it for a while, maybe one or two lifetimes, but not indefinitely. In an earlier episode, um, you spoke of when faced with a karmic account, you have to look at yourself and ask yourself some uh, meaningful questions mm. about the account mm. in order to what you call pay the minimum price. Mm. Um, so you faced with a karmic account and you would like to do that and then there's your ego that pulls you in the opposite direction. Walk us through the um, way to, I don't know, neutralize your ego, manage your ego and manage the karmic account because it's not, from what I gather from what you just said, it's not just your karmic account that's the problem but the reaction that it causes within you that's also the problem. Exactly, exactly so and that's going to uh, amplify the karmic account a lot. The first question to ask yourself is do you want to be free from ego? Oof, that's a difficult question. <laughs> but it's the first question. And if somebody says, okay, um, I wish to be free from ego because I'm on a spiritual path and spirituality, we want to become free from ego. So if someone says, okay, well, I have some good ways to take down your ego. Okay, so let's see what your good ways are. And they usually involve humiliations. A ego is best taken down through humiliation. Then the question is, can you handle the humiliation? Because if you don't have much ego, you'll be able to manage the humiliation. It may be unpleasant, but it's manageable. If you really have big ego, then the humiliation is absolutely impossible to handle and it will break you, you know, you'll be undone by it. But then it goes to show that, okay, well, that means you've got a big ego, so don't claim that you don't have one. QED, you know, you got one. And who's going to take you seriously because you're just all hot air, you know? Mm. This first question, do you want to be free from ego, is very, very important because then you will pay whatever price one question to look at is how did you get your ego? Very important question because ego can also be seen and I tend to look at it as a mask that you construct to protect yourself subsequent to some trauma. And your problem is if you become fused with that mask that then becomes the ego problem. So the key is to keep yourself separate from the mask. When you're fused with the mask, you become that person, which is not really you. So it's a false ego and it's a bit brittle. And any time some person or circumstance will try to take it down, in that situation, you try to, the ego tries to protect itself always. And again, the aggression comes. So ego and aggression go together. So aggression means also negative karma, right? Sure. Well, that's a, a lot. <laughs> mm. So what you are saying is somebody who is um, spiritual will want to minimize their ego and settle their karmic accounts with dignity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of us go through life uh, hoping nothing bad will happen to me. Is this ego? Or I think is it positive thinking? Is it ego? No, I, I think it's fear. In the face of fear, either you take a step of courage or you uh, do an act of cowardice. So the step of courage is the good one. And how would you define courage in this context? You think nothing bad should happen to me, but then you also have to think, if it does, I'll deal with it. Okay, so it's kind of like trusting yourself. Yeah, because if you say, oh, I don't want anything bad to happen to me, why? Because if it does, I can't deal with it. You can, or, you know, you figure it out. They say necessity is the mother of invention. So if you are, you know, saying, okay, I'll deal with it, then that's much more like 
courageous, um, you're there for yourself, um, get on with it. If you're not, it's weak, you know, and you can't have self-respect if you're that weak. Obviously, things are going to go bad sometimes and good sometimes. This is normal. You can't say, oh, maybe something bad might happen to me. Okay, so? The worst thing can happen to you, what is it? You'll die? You'll lose face? What is the worst thing that can happen to you? Think about it and then go to that place and see whether you can survive it or not. You know, if you, if you say, the worst thing that can happen to me is I get rejected. So go and see if somebody will reject you and if they do reject you, maybe it's painful but you still survive. Or the worst thing that happens to me is I die, you know. Okay, you can't die, you're a soul, you're immortal, so it's very difficult. Mm. You may lose your body, no doubt. But you will not stop existing. So, I mean, people need to understand these things, to alleviate these fears. Okay, the worst thing that happens to me is I'm all alone. If you do good karma, there's going to be people. I had a situation the other day, a couple of days ago, I said, oh, I would like such and such a thing. Three people immediately came and gave me that thing. Three. Instantly. <laughs> and um, why? Because they feel well disposed. I think a person who's interested in karma will be trying to clock up good karma and trying to do always something that makes sense karmically. And then you will... Um, do all sorts of good things and then there'll be all sorts of good consequences and then you have to enjoy those. Mm. If you do lots of bad karma, you'll be in trouble because no credit. It's to be looked at like economics. Economics, very few of us do that. To many people, settling a karmic debt involves pain and you have settling whatever account you have, through a relationship, through physical suffering of the body, mental condition, finances, various ways. You have pain of some sort and then your ego. Now when those three mix, uh, at that moment your life is a disaster. How are you able to bring spiritual wisdom? and apply it in such a situation. And from a human perspective, when sorrow strikes, it's a very natural human reaction to experience the pain and suffering. Well, the worst part of the thing, the matrix, you can say, is the ego part. Because if you don't have ego, well, you will have endurance you will have resilience, you will have humility, you will have patience. And so you will not really think that that disaster is as bad as when you're coming from a place of ego, it's really the end of the world. Um, when negativity strikes, either through the hand of another human being or through matter or through some force, it's uh, quite common and quite natural to feel like a victim, a victim of circumstances. Is that also ego? Uh, you know, there's two sides of ego. One is the superiority and one is the inferiority. And I think this victim consciousness is the inferiority coming in. And ego, you flip-flop between superiority and inferiority. So if you think, okay, I'm a victim, I'm being victimized, you're going to be putting out negative thought. You're not going to be sort of consolidating your energy and seeing, okay, what am I going to do with this and consolidate my energy and see what next, you know. There's always ways out of things. And, and uh, it's very important to Again and again, bring yourself into your power. Uh, I like this expression that you just used, there's always a way out of things. There are some, listening to you right now, who are facing in their own belief 
problems that are insurmountable. What would you say to them? There are insurmountable problems, but um, it is what it is. Um, you are not the problem, or the problem isn't you. You, you need to create some detachment, some distance between yourself and the problem. And because if all you can see is the problem, your vision's pretty narrow. It may be a very, very big problem, but if you kind of step back from it a little bit, uh, you may be able to see a viable solution. That would be good. But I know that there are really, really difficult situations that people are in that are a matter of life and death, and very often end up in death. But um, even that, you see, you move on. You move on, you create something. It's not the end. People have mental problems, mental illnesses. It's very difficult for them, very difficult for their carers. The world we live in is very difficult in many ways, but what we need to do is, again, go to spiritual power, take power, take force, take light from the meditation, mm. and then you can get through it. When a person is in a situation where they are facing a karmic account, and um, there's an awareness that there's this account, as well as your ego, how do you manage your feelings in a situation like that? Because your feelings are all over the place. Definitely. I think one attribute of ego that people need to know is that it's very difficult for a person with ego to manage their feelings. As you said, they're all over the place. And they will expect others to manage their feelings, but they will not expect to have to manage their own feelings. Um, which is a bit inequitable, but that's part of ego, is it's not equitable. You have to be able to develop resilience, and you have to come down from your arrogant position and realize that you're just like everybody else. And the circumstances which challenge your ego so much are the message that says, you know, you're not that much greater than everybody else. You want to become great? Take these tests. Take the tests, and if you can pass through all those tests, you will develop the wisdom, the humility, and the greatness that um, the ego was pretending. Because the ego is not real, it's called false ego. Yeah. Um, uh, going back to what you said earlier, I still think that it takes a lot of courage to be able to look at all of these dynamics playing out in your own life and wondering which way to go. Mm -hmm. Any last words of wisdom to our audience before we say goodbye to them? Well, I think that we just have to deal with the fact that we are passing through very difficult, challenging times. Climate change, uh, economic uncertainty, huge refugees crisis from wars as well as climate change, uh, crime levels, uh, addiction levels, um, breakdown of relationships, uh, tremendous political uncertainty and instability. It's very, very trying times. So I suppose in that we need to simplify and we need to spend time in meditation, taking power to be able to get through it and stay in one piece. Mm. Because there's no getting away from it. These are very difficult times. Okay, on that note, we'll say goodbye to you. Uh, thank you, audience, for joining us for this half an hour. And there you go, the subject of ego and the law of karma. So a very interesting subject indeed. And I would ask you to ask your own heart as to um, 
what the condition of your own ego is and something that sister denise took up in today's topic in a very meaningful way when you're facing a karmic account does your ego make the problem worse and i think no human being in their right mind would want to be in that position so thank you so much sister denise and thank you for joining us and i hope today's topic has been of some relevance in your personal life take care and goodbye